بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode in this series. Live your life on purpose. My dear brothers and sisters, as we have discussed and as we remind you each time, the goal for each and every one of us. is everlasting paradise. While this paradise and while this most amazing goal should in theory help to keep us focused and dictate that we live a very determined and a very purposeful life, the unfortunate reality is that we become distracted. We become distracted by the beauty and by the adornment and the amusement of this life and we forget ourselves. We forget our purpose and we forget this most tremendous goal. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a critical problem that each and every one of us need to address. We need to constantly remember our purpose and we must constantly work to embody both the characteristics and the actions of the believer who is truly trying to live their life for their hereafter. Truly trying to live their life on purpose. In keeping with this theme of live your life on purpose, we identified several characteristics that embody and describe this specific believer, the one who was now focused and determined on his, for his hereafter. Characteristics included honesty, chivalry, truthfulness and patience, humility, reliance, tawbah, and the list goes on. My dear brothers and sisters, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we continue in this episode by talking about a characteristic that should be extremely important to anyone who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day. As it is a characteristic that destroys relationships. A characteristic that destroys marriages and a characteristic that destroys communities and facilitates one's earning a spot in the fire of hell. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ We are talking about the characteristic of arrogance. Kibr. In the Arabic language, the word is Kibr. K-I-B-R. Kibr. Arrogance. Remember this word. We start, insha'Allah ta'ala, by narrating a hadith which details the prophetic definition of Kibr as well as the consequences for the one who has this characteristic. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر وقال الرجل إن الرجل يحب أن يكون ثوبه حسنا ونعله حسنا 
وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله جميل يحب الجمال الكبر بطر الحق وغمط الناس The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He said The person who has even a مثقال ذرة a small amount of kibr of arrogance in his heart that person will not enter paradise from amongst the listeners one of the sahaba he said but sometimes a man likes to have a nice pair of shoes or a nice toe and this was an implied question meaning is this the type of kibr that you are talking about is this the type of arrogance by wanting to wear a nice tobe that will lead me to the hellfire and make paradise haram upon me? To which the Prophet ﷺ responded, Verily, Allah is beautiful. And He loves beauty. And next, He gave the prophetic definition of kibr. He said, Al kibr, batar al haqq. Kibr, arrogance, is rejecting the truth. Wa ghamtun nas, and looking down upon the people. My dear brothers and sisters, this hadith is extremely important because most of us, unfortunately, we suffer from some form of kibr or another. Whether it's we look down upon other people, even in a small way maybe, or perhaps we reject the truth when it is given to us. In this hadith, it shows the dangers of having this arrogance, this kibr in your heart. For it does not require that your entirety of the heart is filled with arrogance, or only half of your heart filled with arrogance. The hadith says, if you have even a mithqalu dharra, if you have the smallest amount of kibr in your heart. So let us look at this word, the dharra. What is the dharra? It was said that the word dharra, which we find several times in the Quran, this refers to the smallest particle known to the Arabs. So at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it could have been said that the dharra was the dust particle. As a result, when you read the translations of the Qur'an, some of them will use such a translation. Others will translate the dharra as the gnat that flies around, or the ant, something very small. In our time, we could translate the dharra as the atom, the atom that is known with nuclear energy, one of the smallest particles known to mankind. So you will find other translations that say, if you have even an atom's weight of kibr in your heart, then paradise has become haram for you. Now does this mean that you cannot have nice things? That you cannot wear a nice stove or have a nice watch or a nice car? No, it does not mean this. For the Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna Allah Jameel, Verily, Allah is beautiful. And He loves beauty. So enjoying things is not being arrogant. This hadith is clear that the Muslim who wants to purchase some of the finer things in life, the Muslim who wants to have a nice home in the nicest of neighborhoods. No one can come criticize this person and tell him that this is not from Islam. That is not correct. Rather, the finer things in life, my dear brothers and sisters, are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-razzaq, who provides and who gives to those who he wishes as he likes. My dear brothers and sisters, now we come to the most important part of the hadith, the prophetic definition of kibr. 
And we want to draw your attention to this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Kibr, Batar al-Haq, wa ghamtun nas. He said, Kibr is rejecting the truth and looking down upon the people. So we see two meanings of Kibr. Number one, rejecting the truth. And number two, looking down upon people. We quickly, inshallah ta'ala, take a break. And when we come back, we will continue by discussing these two components of this most important prophetic definition of Kibr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, worship me, Allah, then Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. Before the break, we talked about the prophetic definition of Kibr. Specifically, that it said there are two components. Number one, rejecting the truth, batar al haqq. And number two, ghamtun nas, looking down upon the people. We start in reverse order. We start with the second, looking down upon the people, ghamtun nas. We should all know what this means. A person who thinks they are better than others, they think they are all that. In the English language, we say this person feels they are up on a high horse, that they are better than everyone else, that we are beneath them. What do we hear them say? When we ask them something, you're gonna ask me that? I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer. And they get this head nod, right? I'm an imam, I'm a president. That's beneath me. Anything you ask them, they feel that you are beneath them. And what you ask and what you are asking is beneath them. This is istakbara. This is to have this arrogance, seeking to make yourself big. Ghamtun nas, and looking down upon the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is worthy of having this attribute of kibr. For he even calls himself the one who has kibr in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu Al-maliku al-quddusu al-salamu al-mu'minu al-muhayminu al-azizu al-jabbaru al-mutakabbir Allah Azza wa Jal, he calls himself Al-Mutakabbir. He calls himself, I don't like to translate it as the arrogant, because the word arrogant in the English language has a negative connotation. But if you were to translate it using regular language and slang, I'll give one slang translation, how would you translate Al-Mutakabbir? The biggest, the greatest, meaning the most amazing. And indeed, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The greatest, the biggest, everybody is underneath him. He is the king looking down upon the slaves. He is on that level and no one else is there with him. Looking at all of us as if we are on another level. Because my dear brothers and sisters, indeed, we are not even close to that level. He is the only one deserving of this. And not only does he refer to himself as Al-Mutakabbir, but this quality is also a quality that is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we mean by this? We can give one or two examples. For example, the quality of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowledgeable, but his knowledge is perfect. We have the attribute of knowledge, but our knowledge is deficient. So while we can use the same word to describe these qualities, we cannot compare them. Allah's knowledge is perfect, ours is gravely imperfect. Another example is the attribute of planning. Allah is the planner. All of his plans are perfect they come to fruition and they come about exactly as expected. We also plan, 
but unfortunately, our plans may often fail, or as our spouses would at least inform us. So my dear brothers and sisters, there is a tremendous difference between these attributes, even though we use the same word. But there are other attributes that are exclusive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is Al-Kibr. We relate to you a hadith Qudsi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the speaker. In this hadith, Allah says, Al-Izza Izari Wal-Kibriya'u Rida'i Faman naza'ani shay'an minhuma Adhabatuhu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, The glory and the prestige are my izar. And the kibr is my rida. For whoever competes with me in either of these things, they will be punished. They will be punished. So no one, my dear brothers and sisters, has the right to compete with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in having this kibr. No one has the right to even have that attribute because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on that level. For everyone else, we must realize that we are nothing. We are only the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam came to destroy all avenues and all manifestations of kibr. How often did a stranger visit Medina for the first time and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama was sitting right in front of him. And the stranger had to say, where is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Where is Muhammad? Who is Muhammad? Why? Because he did not sit above the people. Nor did he try to make himself look distinct from his companions. This is the way that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his own example, showed us how you get rid of kibr. Additionally, he made several things haram for the purpose of killing all manifestations of arrogance. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man ahabba an yatamathala lahar rijal qiyaman fal yatabawwa maqa'adahu minan nar. Subhanallah. He said, whoever loves for people to stand up for him when he enters the room, then let this person prepare his place in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters, listen to that hadith and reflect about how often we encounter this. Think about the various cultures you have seen, experienced, or at least heard about. And when someone walks into the room, everyone stands up. And this happens so often that it then becomes expected. But this is what goes against the deen. As the Prophet ﷺ just said, whoever loves for people to stand up for him, then let this person prepare his spot in the hellfire. Subhanallah. If you are an individual who expects this, then you need to look at your heart, my dear brothers and sisters, because the unfortunate reality is you have kibr in your heart. We now get to the second definition of kibr, and this is batr al haq rejecting the truth, rejecting the reality. We have the truth from our Lord, but we reject it. We have the solution, but we turn it down. This is kibr. And the first one to do this was Iblis, a shaytan la'anuhullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Aba wastakbara wa kana min al kafirin. That the shaytan, he refused to follow the order of Allah azza wa jal. وَاسْتَكْبَرَ And he was arrogant. He had this kibr. And he was from the disbelievers. Unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters, many of us follow down this same path. 
when an Islamic subject is being discussed or debated and when the truth is presented before you, we reject this truth, stubbornly holding on to our opinion. And this is kibr, period, point blank. There is no dancing around the issue. When we discuss a hadith or an ayah, and if any of us reject this truth, this is kibr. But how can we do so in light of the so many ayat? For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, فَلَا وَرَبِّ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He starts by swearing by His own self, فَلَا وَرَبِّكْ And know by your Lord, they will not believe. They have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, the judge between them in all of their affairs. And they find no resistance against your decisions and they accept them with full submission. You will never believe, my dear brothers and sisters, until you do this. So the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our judge. But how many of us really adopt that as our judge? If we have a dispute over something in our marriage, in our masjid, or in our communities, and we refer it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're supposed to accept that with full submission, having no resistance in our hearts. But what do we normally find? You can bring ayah after ayah after ayah, hadith after hadith after hadith, until you are blue in the face, and they will keep rejecting. Why? Kibr, arrogance, batar al haq rejecting the truth. They will follow their way. And what is the reality, my dear brothers and sisters, for the one who has even a small mithqal dharra, atom's weight of kibr in their hearts, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. The one who has even a small amount of arrogance in his heart, he will not enter paradise. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is a very serious topic, obviously. We need to look into ourselves to see where are we possibly being arrogant to people and looking down upon them. And we need to look into ourselves and into our hearts and try to identify, are we rejecting any parts of the truth when it is presented? Let us strive to be humble and to embody the true characteristic of humility into our hearts and into our lives. Until next time, fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe. To him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever living, he is the first. He's the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worshipping other than Allah. There is none greater than the